Hello everybody and welcome to this video about scraping uh, Facebook Marketplace. So whenever you want to scrape a website, first thing you want to do is uh, go to the website itself and have a look. Um, what I found out um, messing around on Marketplace is if I search for something, say I want to search for a table, in Danish that will be bore can search for it and the URL will change up here um, adding the search keyword here and uh, the query parameter here with my search keyword and some additional stuff here um, what I figured out was that if I add a location here say I add a city say I say, say I add uh, Danish city billant. If I add it here, it would add, add additional query parameters up here, being the latitude and the longitude. So, by the looks of it, we can search using the, our search keyword here and the location. And these are the two most important things when we are looking for items since we don't want to look for items anywhere in the world but we, and we don't want to look for random stuff you want to look for something specific so this is all we need now uh, ready in order to uh, scrape the website jumping directly into VS Code um, the first thing we want to do is we want to download a package and um, in this case the package we want to download is Puppeteer for scraping the website and the first thing I'll do is just npm init our project and then go ahead and npm install Puppeteer After downloading Puppeteer, we are ready to do some code. First thing we want to do is add a new JS file. I'll just call my file index.js. And uh, I will start off by defining a variable called Puppeteer and require the Puppeteer library. And Right, and um, I'll start off by defining a variable called browser, and I want this variable to be global, since in case we're going to use this in production, uh, it is very good to have a global browser object and then just add pages to that object instead of spawning additional browser instances, this will perform uh, better. All right, and I've also defined a variable headless uh, at the top because when working with scraping, you kind of want to be changing this variable a lot. So I just want to separate this variable. Now I want to define my main function here and I'll just call it main. And the first thing when we're working with Puppeteer is to launch our browser instance and we do that by calling launch on our property object important thing here is that we should await this function call and uh, yeah just in general when working with property we need to await a lot of stuff You'll see. All right, uh, next thing we want to do is to open a page. So I want to define, define a variable called page and uh, I will await 
browser dot new page and uh, now if you remember if you remember a little way back we remember that we had to add a search word so item we want to search for in this case it was sport and we also had some coordinates some longitude and some latitude so I'm just gonna define the, uh, some values here that we can use all right uh, next thing we want to define is the URL now I'm just gonna copy paste the URL here with our different variables included in this uh, string here. So we have our search word, our latitude and our longitude here. And some extra stuff that the browser automatically adds when we are searching. Now, now the next step is basically we want to visit that page. So let's uh, call the go to function on our page and put in the URL. Now, now so far so good. Uh, next up, we want to wait for a specific uh, div on the page. Um, because the page is JavaScript generated, it will not be available uh, immediately. So we need to call wait for. And the div we want to wait for is the div with the data attribute, data test ID equal to marketplace search feed content. When this page, when this has been added to the page, we have some, some products we can pull out. And then, um, when we want to look for something on the page, we need to call evaluate. So let's say, let's call, let's define a variable called items and then await page dot evaluate, evaluate. And then pass in a function here. And next step is that we want to select um, our products and we would like to use a CSS selector to get those products. So let's define variables to begin with and then call uh, array from and then call document query selector all. Since we are expecting more than one product here. And then our selector. And uh, our selector is not that easy. We need to do some nesting here. So basically we want this and then grab the, the third div after this one. I'm just gonna paste in the selector here so you can see it. Uh, you can get this yourself by playing around uh, in the browser. So basically we're selecting our search feed content and then we take the the div just below it and then the first uh, then the div just below this but the first div of the two divs and then the next div this should yield all our items and we would like to map over these items so we're calling the map function here and we get a product and uh, for each product we get here, we would like to return something. We would like to return, let's say we wanted to return the title here. So we can call the return method of just call return. And then we can return an object and this could have a title, for example. And uh, what we want to do here is we want to call on product. We want to call a selector. And uh, if we select 
uh, the first paragraph we can get to, we will actually get the title. Uh, I will make a ternary expression here, because just in case there is no title, we don't want our program to fail. So if there is a paragraph, we would like to get the inner text on that one, otherwise just return nothing. Right, and uh, that should be all for now. Uh, let's return our products here at the end of the evaluate. And then here we can console log out our items. Now let's try to run this, um, this code and see um, if there should be any mistakes along the way. Node.index.js Oh, it seems like we're not calling our main function. So let's call it. Oh, there we go. We did return some products here. Um, and um, we were searching for the word boar and it seems like we got a lot of boars back, a lot of tables. Um, and uh, I actually have set uh, headless to false. So I have the Chromium window open here on my other monitor and I can see that the location I chose also went through perfectly. Okay guys, that, that was all. Um, obviously, there are a lot of um, different improvements that can be made here. Here we're just selecting some items and um, just returning the title. Uh, what would be useful also could be returning some images, the descriptions and prices. Uh, furthermore, we are not um, uh, waiting too long here. We're just waiting for the search feed to appear. Um, as far as I can see on the marketplace, um, the items are getting loaded in over time. So instead of waiting for this search feed content, we could be waiting for this specific div to reach a specific length before going through all the items. And also there are options to implement some scrolling so you can load in even more items. So there are many improvements to be made, but this is just the very basic how to uh, grab some items from the marketplace without being logged in. Hope you guys enjoyed and see you in the next one.